Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I want to talk about uh, a few different capital allocators and basically who is kind of, in my opinion, uh, the best person that is taking cash flows, taking profits from, from a business and uh, reinvesting that at attractive rates to continue growing uh, wealth and, and growing the value of the equity in those businesses for their shareholders. Now, uh, this video is kind of inspired by a question that we had from Frank Tabor, previously Investing with Frank here on YouTube. Uh, he asked a question in a recent Movember live stream Q&A session, basically asking who we thought was the best capital allocator out of Pony Ma, the CEO of Tencent, uh, Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook or, or now Meta, or Elon Musk from Tesla and SpaceX and so on. So uh, caused a bit of controversy uh, definitely in the chat during that live stream. And I want to just give some kind of expanded thoughts here in this video on that topic after having a day or so to kind of mull it over. So that is the topic for today's video but before we get into that we do have a sponsor for this one and the sponsor for today's video is Hatch. Now Hatch are the broker that I've personally been using for more than a couple of years now for me as a Kiwi here in New Zealand uh, to make all of my US investments. I was previously doing uh, all of my US investing through one of the big banks here in New Zealand and options in terms of brokerage was really few and far between. So I did not have uh, many alternatives than going to one of the big banks and paying fairly uh, egregious fees. I was paying 90 US dollars, which I think is like 130 New Zealand dollars to make a single trade. So you had to be working with some reasonably sizable amounts of money to kind of get that fee down to a small percentage of your investments. But now that Hatch have come along, it's made investing in US markets a lot cheaper and more easily accessible for New Zealand investors. So I can now make that exact same trade using Hatch for as little as three US dollars. And since I've been a customer of Hatch, they have continued to improve the platform by launching things like kids accounts. So you can now set up an account for your kids and start investing and compounding money really early when they've got a super long runway for growth and you can do so with even lower fees than a traditional Hatch account. So if you're interested in checking out Hatch uh, kids accounts or Hatch in general, you'll need to go to the link hatch.as forward slash investing with Tom. If you go to that link, sign up and start a new Hatch account and deposit $100 or more into that account, you'll get a free $20 top up from Hatch so that you can get started investing with a little bit more money. Okay, so let's talk capital allocation and, uh, you know, Pony Ma at Tencent versus Mark Zuckerberg at Meta versus Elon Musk at Tesla and uh, my thoughts on who I guess is the best capital allocator. And uh, the reason I sort of say best in quotation marks is because I think uh, you're kind of comparing oranges and apples with these three, but I hope to explain that in more detail with, uh, you know, with this video. So um, let's talk kind of capital allocation in general just to get some initial kind of basics out of the way. I think um, if we look at someone like Warren Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway, he is kind of the shining example of phenomenal capital allocation over a very, very long period of time. Um, Berkshire Hathaway originally started as a dying kind of textile mill when Warren Buffett first took it over in the 1960s. And basically all he's done, you know, over that time, and I, I don't want to say all he's done as if it was kind of uh, an easy thing to do, but basically what he's done is he's taken the initial capital that was in that textile mill, he slowly sort of liquidated that business over actually quite a long period of time. He then took that cash from slowly liquidating parts of the business and then he allocated that capital into new investments. And uh, as he continued to do that and he started to get into uh, much more profitable kind of enterprises, um, both uh, public companies and also buying uh, private businesses to kind of live under the hood of Berkshire Hathaway, he then took the profits that those businesses started to generate and then uh, allocated that capital out into buying even more businesses and even more publicly traded stocks. And he was able to allocate that capital at really, really high rates of return. So he was taking cash generated from the business, uh, investing that into new publicly traded companies or new private businesses, and getting, you know, on, on average, probably about 20% a year returns on those investments. And again, uh, kind of just continued to snowball to where initially he was working with millions of dollars, then he went to tens of millions and hundreds of millions and billions and now he's working with hundreds of billions of dollars I think that's right so uh, the snowball has just kind of gotten greater and greater and greater and it's grown at an extremely impressive rate 
And the interesting thing with Buffett is that he's really done this over a lot of different industries. He hasn't kind of uh, slotted himself into just a social media company in the case of Mark Zuckerberg or just a, a car company or an energy company and you know a space business with Elon Musk or into software businesses like someone like Ponyma. He's done this in uh, insurance, he's done it in railroads, he's done it in chocolate, he's done it in technology, he's done it in newspapers. He's kind of been spread out across all sorts of different industries and the reason he's done that is because he was kind of just opportunistically uh, finding businesses year after year after year and kind of going wherever the returns looked most attractive and he was of course investing in businesses that he understood very well. And any time that you're investing in a business, I think it is important to try and partner with good capital allocators and good managers when possible. And um, there are a few metrics that we can look at in each of these businesses mentioned, uh, like Tencent and Meta and Tesla, to kind of assess whether we think that these managers are good capital allocators. And one of the first places and simplest places to look is in metrics like return on equity and return on invested capital. This is basically uh, of the profits that the business generates that are reinvested invested, uh, what kind of returns are they generating either on just purely the equity or the invested capital which is equity basically plus any debt that the business might take on to you know grow the pie, uh, what kind of returns are they generating on that money for shareholders. And if we compare companies like Tencent and Meta and Tesla on these metrics, uh, really the standout here is Tencent and Ponyma. Now, uh, this probably isn't a big surprise to anyone that's followed Tencent's business for a while. This is one that uh, is pretty new to me and I'm still kind of trying to get my head around it. But Monish Pabrai recently explained Tencent's business model to us very, very simply. They basically have two core parts of the business. One is kind of an army of software engineers where uh, every year they grow that army of software engineers. Uh, they throw a bunch of money at them to develop new software products and historically they've earned a massive kind of 60% return on invested capital uh, with those software engineers and building new software products. Now the trouble with that business is that uh, there's only so much money that you can put into hiring new software engineers and building out new software products. There is kind of an upper limit to how much Tencent can actually continue reinvesting in that enterprise but they can also allocate capital other places so uh, kind of the second cab off the rank for a company like Tencent is to basically give money to what Monish Pabrai called their uh, kind of army of Chinese Warren Buffets. Now these are basically uh, venture capital investors so they're going out and looking at newer kind of startup type businesses or early stage businesses and historically they've earned say 20 to 30 percent returns on those investments. And if you look at then the overall kind of return on equity or return on invested capital for Tencent, uh, it roughly lands kind of in between those two ranges. So it's been about 20 to 30% a year. Sometimes it's much higher, sometimes it's much lower. I think you'll see a year on the chart here where it's north of 50% uh, kind of back in 2010 or 11. And um, it jumps around a little bit, but certainly these are very, very high rates of return that the business is generating. If we then compare that to a business like Meta or Facebook uh, with Mark Zuckerberg, uh, and again look at those same metrics, return on equity and return on invested capital, those are going to actually show close to the same number, those two metrics with Meta, just because Facebook doesn't have any debt. So uh, over time the return on equity and return on invested capital has improved for Facebook, and again that's been in and around kind of 20% per year. And finally, if we look at something like Tesla, uh, this is actually a really difficult one to assess right now. So if you look at return on invested capital uh, or the history of that metric for Tesla, historically this has actually looked really bad and uh, it's actually been negative because uh, Tesla has only in the last maybe year or two kind of reached a sustainable kind of profitability sort of level. Um, so I think this is probably too early to judge. Now, I don't want to talk about stock price or valuation or anything for Tesla because that's going to cause an even more heated debate probably in the comments of this video but uh, I think one important thing to note with a business like Tesla is uh, they are kind of a metal bender like they're, they're building cars and uh, that requires a lot of capital up front to build out the gigafactories that, that Tesla are building and um, until they have kind of fully scaled out their 
um, manufacturing facilities and so on, I think return on invested capital is likely to look pretty bad at Tesla, frankly. Once the business is more mature and it's kind of finished this just parabolic growth of like 40 or 50% a year, which it has done over the past few years, I think once we get to a more mature state for Tesla, something like return on equity and return on invested capital is going to be a much more interesting metric to pay attention to. Now, if you just purely looked at something like return on equity and return on invested capital as metrics alone uh, and tried to figure out, you know, who's the best capital allocator out of Pony Mark, Tencent, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk, uh, that may lead you to jump to the conclusion that Pony Mark, Tencent is without a doubt the best capital allocator. He's got the best return on equity, he's got the best return on invested capital. And, um, you know, you'd be able to make a pretty good argument for that, frankly. But I think there's a couple of key things to keep in mind and an example that I've mentioned here on the channel before because it's a industry that I'm very familiar with is something like agriculture or farming. Now uh, just because a business doesn't have a super high return on equity uh, or it has a more modest return on equity doesn't necessarily mean that the manager has poorer um, skill, has lower levels of skill and it doesn't necessarily mean that they are terrible capital allocators. Now it's just kind of the nature of certain businesses that they can sometimes be very capital intensive and even the best manager in the world in a particular industry just simply because of the kind of structure of the industry that they operate in they're not going to be able to earn 50 60 percent returns on equity you know the typical return on capital here in new zealand for a dairy farmer for example uh, fluctuates a little bit year to year depending on what milk prices and things are doing but it's probably somewhere in the maybe four to seven percent range uh, fairly modest returns on capital because there's a lot of money tied up in land and plants and equipment and animals and so on and uh, even the best kind of superstar managers, the best farmer in New Zealand kind of thing, uh, it would be pretty rare to see a consistent return on capital north of say 10%. That would be very, very impressive uh, for a farmer to achieve here in New Zealand. Now, does that mean every farmer, uh, you know, is a terrible business person and has terrible capital allocation skills? Uh, no, not not at all. It's just really a function of the uh, industry that they operate in. If you put some of those people who are often very, very good business people into a software business and they happen to have expertise in software, I think you would see them generate very, very different results. So from my perspective, trying to compare the capital allocation skills of someone who is producing cars with someone who is producing software where I think is a kind of null exercise and um, I can certainly see why it causes some heated debate but uh, I really don't think it's any sort of comparison. Now if you were to take a Warren Buffett on the other hand who is uh, very sort of industry agnostic I would say and is happy to move around different industries and then you maybe compared them to someone like Tom Gaynor at Markel who runs a very very similar model where they have this core insurance business that generates float and then they invest uh, you know the float and and the profits from those insurance businesses and other ventures across various different industries. If you're comparing those two people, I think that is a great comparison to make because you are comparing apples with apples in that instance. But comparing people across industries where they don't have a huge kind of capacity to, you know, just take all of their investors' capital, you know, in a car company, for example, and start investing it elsewhere, um, you know, shareholders are probably likely to not be very happy about that. I think it's tough to do those comparisons. You know, there's the famous Warren Buffett quote that goes something like, uh, when a manager with a reputation for ex excellence encounters a business with a reputation for poor economics, it's generally the reputation of the business that remains intact. So those are some thoughts on capital allocation and just something I've been mulling over uh, yesterday since Frank's question. Uh, Frank always asks the really tough questions and uh, really gets my gets my brain spinning. So I appreciate that from you, Frank, if you're watching. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed those thoughts. Now, if you're interested in checking out the Hatch offer, you'll need to go to the link hatch.as forward slash investing with Tom. But that's it from me for this one. If you did enjoy the video, please hit like and hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.